Hey, I'm Robert Barris, and this here is Mike Burgess from Cox Automotive. Um, we just finished up our fourth installment of our Enterprise Entrepreneurship Series, uh, and Mike was here today talking about his experience bringing a new venture um, from idea and hypothesis all the way to life, and, and what has now become a very successful new venture uh, within Cox Automotive. So first, thanks, Mike, Mike, for being here. Appreciate it. Thanks, Robert. Um, so I guess tell us a high level, a little bit about what you talked about today, um, just for the well, we talked about um, this whole process of creating a business, creating an innovation inside of a, a very large, successful enterprise. Cool. Uh, so, if you can expand a little bit more about that in, in terms of um, taking an idea from uh, essentially a hypothesis all the way to market, um, what are some of the key pieces that you felt like really resonated with the audience today? Yeah, you know, we, um, we talked a lot about this whole process of how you get started. Um, you know, at any big company, and ours as well, there's a lot of energy around investing on the core business. And we talked today about how do you get that seed money, if you will, how do you get that initial investment to begin? And, and how do you convince decision makers to do that? Yeah. Um, so let's, let's focus in on the hypothesis for a second. You, know, you, talk, you just talked about how do you get that buy-in. Um, you know, when you think about how to create a great hypothesis and essentially a problem statement and then get support to essentially test that, how did you do that for your idea to make deal? Yeah, so, you know, we're in automotive and um, automotive retail, car dealerships is who we serve as clients and consumers. And so, you know, what we, what we focused on doing was establishing a question for ourselves. Could we prove that our hypothesis around moving the car buying process online, could it be done? And laser focused our, our investment and our energy and our prototype on proving whether or not that question could be true. Can we move the car buying experience online? And that was our hypothesis. And, and the way we used data to prove that to ourselves is, did consumers engage in the process? and would our clients continue to be clients to continue to pay the bill? And those two metrics were number, were everything that we focused on. Hey, Todd, um, how did you get an enterprise level company, an enterprise level company, comfortable with the concept of a minimum viable product, knowing that they like things to be polished and really well put together? How did you do that so that you could actually create this and essentially serve a solution up to your hypothesis? Well, you've got it. You've got to get the organization to understand. What, what we tried to do is get the organization to understand it was going to be messy. And big, successful companies are great at protecting their brands and being very uh, complete and polished and, and, and successful in delivering their products and services. And so we had to make a safe place for, for us to be messy. And the one way we did that, at, and in our case, was to create a separate brand to separate the brand, which separated the risk, you know, because you've got the reputation of the four brands, and if, if you create a separate brand just as a test bed, then you've got a safe place to, to take risk and try things out, and if it blows up, then so be it. And, but, but, um, but that's one thing we did, was to separate, physically separate the team, physically separate the brands, and. Uh, and, try and create a safe place. So if you were to give just a couple of tips for corporate innovators today, what are some of the core things that you would just want to have someone walk away with and feel like that's actionable for them um, within their day to day, within yeah. you know, their, their job role? Well, the, you know, the first thing that I, that I learned uh, and, I, and I would try to do every time that I innovated anything was pick one question, one one, one question, not try to prove more than one thing at one time. And it's really a hypothesis or a test, or can you get human behavior to do this, right? Can you get a client to pay a bill related to this value proposition? Can you get a consumer to engage on the internet in this activity? And if you can prove that, then you've got the chance to get to the next step. Uh, to get the next round of funding to go to the next level beyond the prototype and beyond the minimum viable product to, to a company or to a full-fledged product. 
And, um, and, and then the second, so first is, what's the question or hypothesis? The second thing would then be, just be messy getting there because it doesn't matter if your technology is beautiful or if your, you know, your marketing collateral is tested and fantastic or if your accounting is perfect. It just doesn't matter because if your test is wrong, then it, you've wasted your time and money. So be messy and fast getting the answer to your question. And then, and then you get to kind of the next step. And for us, that was going back to the decision makers who said, here's your investment, to say, here's the data we found that proved the answer to our hypothesis. So we formed the hypothesis, went really fast and messy to get the answer, and then got one piece of data, one metric, not 15 little incremental kind of muddy, cloudy story, but one really, really compelling metric. And for us, that was, if we can land a car shopper on a web page and have them click on a button at a, at a, at a rate that, you know, kind of uh, um, is, is far exceeds the engagement levels that they have on other things on that page, now they've got something. And so it's what one metric are you going to use to convince uh, the folks in your organization that the question you ask is true or false, or proven or unproven? So that was the third piece is what's the metric, what's the one piece of data? That's great. Mike, I appreciate it. Thank you so much for coming. Thanks. Uh, we appreciate it. Stay tuned. Uh, we will tell you very shortly when our next event is coming up in November. Uh, so thank you so much for everyone who tuned in, and thank you everyone for attending this session.